What's up guys, this is Bolash from Racing Brick. I have to start today's review with a disclaimer. The LEGO Technic 42113 Bell Boeing V22 Osprey set that I will show you today was cancelled by the LEGO company shortly before the official release, therefore only a small initial stock reached the stores and it is not and will not be available for a wider audience. According to the official statement, the aircraft was supposed to be released as a rescue version, but since in reality it is only used by the military, therefore it is not in line with LEGO's anti-military policy. I have no clue how it was not realized during the development process, but I guess we won't find this out. So the limited stock means that the price immediately skyrocketed on the secondary market, so you have to be really lucky to find one for an acceptable amount. It's a pity because this means most of the available sets will sit unopened on shelves or in boxes as a collector's item or investment instead of being opened and played. So how did I get one? Luckily I did not have to sell any of my vital organs. I received some help from the amazing guys over at the Moscow Technic Crew Recognized LEGO user group. Without them this review could not have been possible, so make sure to check their cool creations on Instagram and VK, you can find the links in the description. So about the box, as you see it is always a rough ride for a military plane to travel from Russia to Hungary. Luckily I was not planning to resell it, otherwise I would be pretty furious. On the front you see the aircraft in action, seems to be on a rescue mission over the sea with a huge ship in the background. On the back we get some information about the real deal, top speed, weight and some other interesting data. The motorized functions are also presented, it's interesting to see this new icon as it was not used previously. Usually we see the Control Plus label and the app details. This set however does not have app controls, it has a new Technic Hub without Bluetooth connection. It is simply called a battery box on the side, but I prefer to call it the simple Technic Hub. The naming is still confusing for the powered up elements, I guess we will have to wait and see how it will be called by LEGO when it will be available separately in their shop. So I guess I will have to open it now. LEGO investors and scalpers, please close your eyes for a few seconds. This will be painful to watch for you. There are 12 numbered bags inside, splitting the building process into 4 phases. There's an unnumbered bag with the rotor blades, a separate box for the powered up parts and a manual with the sticker sheet. People always complain why do I use my knife on boxes that can be opened with these perforated flaps, well usually because I simply want to save the box in case I have to take a photo of it afterwards, but the other reason is this, I find it much more difficult to open the boxes this way. Inside we have the simple hub and the large motor. So for me the most exciting and by the way the only brand new piece in this set is the simple Technic hub. I will do a separate video about it soon to show you all the details. If it is already published when you watch this review, then you can find the link in the top right corner. In a nutshell, it has the exact same dimensions as the Technic Hub and it has the same removable battery compartment with the 6 AA batteries. The difference is the lack of Bluetooth and it has only two ports. These two ports are controlled by these two switches that can be operated from the top or from the side. If you want to find an analogy from the Power Functions era, it is the AA battery box and two switches crammed in a single box. Let's see the manual. Despite the branding, we get no information about the original aircraft, which is sort of understandable. It would be weird to see the successful military missions or anything similar. You can see here the four main phases of the build, and then it starts immediately. Here is the part list. It is also available in my blog post in high resolution format if you are interested. The link is in the description. If we take a look at the sticker sheet, we can see how LEGO very much tried to put it in a rescue aircraft camouflage. But as we know at the end of the story, it was not enough. So let's start building. In phase 1 we start with the lower part of the fuselage. At this stage I'm not exactly sure which section will this become, but we have to add the hub already at step 11. After adding this contraption that will move the red and black axles, we build a symmetrical structure to the other side of the hub as well. Here comes one of the landing gears, it is attached to the mechanism that we built earlier. After the other gear, the next bigger item closes the bottom of the fuselage behind the hub. These 5x11 angled panels were not available previously in dark bluish grey, 
so it might be a challenge to rebuild the aircraft in a similar color until LEGO makes them available. I will check the alternative color possibilities in another video. Here comes the bigger section of the cargo door. I'm sure this 5x11 panel with the sticker will be a very rare item in a few years. It is quite tricky to attach the door to the rest of the body, make sure to pay attention to the details in the instructions. And yes, it's a good warning for me as well. After adding the upper section of the cargo door, something did not feel right, the doors could not close properly. I realized that the whole rear section has to be placed one step higher, so after fixing it, everything is aligned and works smoothly. It is worth to study this linkage system a little bit. With a single movement, it opens the upper and lower section of the cargo door, but the angle is actually different, the lower part needs to travel more. The front landing gear is also interesting. There are a lot of things dangling around here that will be fixed later on. Once we attach it to the fuselage, the aircraft can already stand on its own wheels. And with this axle added, the front and rear wheels are connected and can be folded and unfolded together. Pretty neat. After building the seats, the body starts to form with the different beams and panels. There are several odd angles that are fixed in place in a clever way, and the different gaps get covered too. We need to add the same beams and panels to the other side, then comes the front section with quite a few stickers, and with the frame of the cabin we arrive to the end of phase 1. The size of the aircraft is already visible, now let's move to the number 2 bags. Phase 2 starts with the function selectors on both sides, and then we build the upper section with the gearbox and the wings. There is the new 7x11 frame as a housing, and this is the first layer of the upper section, Apparently there's a linear clutch between the black gears, we will see the purpose going forward. This section becomes quite complex pretty quickly, but a lot of parts aren't connected yet, so we can't be sure how it will work. The L motor comes in an assembly together with a linear actuator. We start to build the gearbox, and it is good to pay attention to these three a 2 gears, this is where the magic will happen later on. Not the good kind of magic unfortunately. The function selectors are added on both sides, then the gearbox section is closed and another linear actuator is added. The next step is to start building the wings. This is a very interesting part of the transmission. As you see, these are simple friction pins joined together with this white connector piece. These are added to one pair of axles, not sure if they belong to the rotors or to the engine rotation, but they will act as very simple clutches to prevent motor damage when the output is blocked. The wings are covered and the base of the engine is added. Now this is how the upper section looks like before the marriage with the rest of the build. At this point the structure is still pretty visible, so let's try to connect everything and see what's going on in that gearbox. Let's add some batteries, connect the motor to the hub and turn it on. As you see, with all the function selectors in the middle position, the gears are running freely inside, nothing works at this point. The large motor drives that black 12 tooth gear, that drives the 10 20 tooth gear, so the output is geared down at the beginning. The power is transmitted to the red lower clutch gears, and with the 3 dark bluish grey 8 tooth gears, the upper 2 red clutch gears are driven as well. In the upper section we have the engine tilt function, turning that on will drive the blue 20 tooth clutch gear through a warm gear, then it drives the black 12 tooth gear, that drives another 12 tooth gear through the linear clutch, and we arrive to the 10 20 tooth gear that is actually connected to the axles. Once the engines will reach their endpoint, the linear clutch is engaged, and it will slip if the direction of the output is not changed. The other upper function selector can only be turned on in one direction, that will drive the rotors through that brick build clutch system I showed you earlier. This system works pretty well, but you can still hear how the motor is stressed if one or both outputs are blocked. The lower drive rings will be controlled by the two function selectors on the fuselage, and they will drive the two linear actuators, one will control the cargo door, the other one is for the landing gears. Now this is the moment when the two main sections are joined together. You need to align the top part properly and it needs to slide on these vertical beams. 
The cable needs to be connected to port B. You need to slide the grey connector to the proper position in order to be able to connect it to the linear actuator. The other linear actuator needs to be connected as well. It might happen that the wheels are folded so the beams are not in a correct position. Unfold the beams and adjust the end of the actuator to match the hole, then they can be connected. The opening side panels behind the cabin are closed on both sides. We add a few extra panels and a flex axle to finish the cabin and this is the end of phase 2. Here we have the opportunity to test again the functions with the gears and mechanisms exposed. We already saw the engine tilt and rotor functions earlier. Here you can see the cargo door opening and closing mechanisms through the linear actuator. These actuators have built-in clutches to prevent motor damage, but it is advised to stop the motor or change direction when you start to hear the clicking noise. The mechanism for the landing gears is already hidden at this point. Here you can see how they are retracted. The third phase starts with a quite annoying thing, and it happens multiple times in the manual. There's a quite complex build with several required parts, and instead of showing the necessary pieces next to each step, all the parts of this sub-assembly are shown at the first step. This means you need to collect all parts first if you want to make sure that nothing is missing, then you need to build this assembly twice, but to add to the confusion, the parts listed are for the two builds and not only one, that's usually not the case. By the way, the two assemblies will become the flaps for the wings. The next thing to build are the two engines. Here you can see the inner structure, how the rotors will be driven. These stacked three stud long beams are forming the rear section of the engine. It is a pretty unusual building method in an official set. After the lower section, we add the few system pieces and the engine is ready to be attached to the wing. Now we need to build the engine on the other side and once it's done, phase 3 is finished. After a few bits and pieces, we build a cover for the rear section and the tail. There's a linkage mechanism that controls the rear flap. It is attached to a lever that we are able to control manually once it is attached to the fuselage. A little attention to detail here, this axle is grey instead of the new standard yellow, I guess because the ends are very visible on the top of the aircraft. The section between the wings gets covered as well. If you are allergic to scratches on brand new parts, then don't look now. One of the rare triangular panels have few scratches here. I guess there's no point of calling LEGO customer service regarding parts of an officially cancelled set, but I think I will give it a try anyway. The vertical stabilizer has two separate stickers on a single panel. It is not possible to apply a single one because of the holes. Here comes the rotor. The core is this Y-shaped connector piece, the structure is built around that. After adding the rotor blades, there are some stickers to apply, but I don't really understand them. The trapezoid shape of the sticker does not match at all the tip of the blades, so I could not apply them in any way that would look good. After mounting the rotor blades on the other side, there are only a few pieces left to make them completed. So, here is our finished aircraft. Well, actually almost finished, somehow I missed these two beams to add to the vertical stabilizer. And now it is really finished. So, let's see how it looks. First of all, I'm really impressed by the size of the Osprey, it is quite big, it barely fits on my photo table. Here is the 8434 aircraft next to it, now in real life. And this is another comparison with the 42096 Porsche set. The aircraft looks great from all angles, the panels flow nicely and a lot of detail is added with the stickers. The cockpit could be a little bit more detailed, but due to the scale I think it could be only achieved with small system pieces. The hub sticks out a little bit at the bottom, but it blends in quite well and having an easy access to the battery compartment is a big plus. The whole structure is very robust, you can easily pick up the aircraft and swoosh it around. For the full experience you will want to turn on the engines, but pay attention to the rotor blades as they are spinning quite fast. Thanks to the safety mechanism built in, it is unlikely to get any injuries, but of course make sure not to hit an eye or something. As you see it is a bit challenging to play a whole takeoff and landing sequence, you need to hold the aircraft with one hand and then with the other operate the different function selectors and meanwhile pay attention to the rotor blades all the time.
Due to the length of the rotor blades, it is not possible to land the aircraft with the engines tilted forward. This is the minimum angle required. I really like how the flaps are connected to the engine tilting mechanism, it works great. The flaps at the rear are manual and controlled by that linkage and the lever I showed you earlier. This function seems to be a bit out of place, but still works ok. If you forgot to extend the landing gears, then you need to pick up the aircraft. The motor and the linear actuator is not strong enough to lift the whole thing up, which is quite heavy by the way. Functions are working as I showed you during the build. Due to the construction of the gearbox, it is possible to operate more than one of them at the same time. This is however something that I would not advise to do without any modifications. Unfortunately, due to an issue with the construction, the a 2 gears transmitting the power from the motor to the upper functions can get damaged easily. I think the main issue is the linear clutch that's supposed to protect the motor tilting function, it is simply too strong for this purpose. I will publish a separate video soon where we look into the details of this issue and explore some possible fixes. If you want to build a set yourself using parts that are currently available, I suggest to check out this topic on Eurobricks with lots of useful information. You can find a link to it in the description and in my blog post as well. All in all I think it is a great Technic set and it's a shame that the whole licensing concept was not revised earlier during the design process. It is definitely something new in the Technic line with some cool functionality and useful parts, especially the simple Technic hub. I'm not sure if we can expect any sets with it in the near future, but I hope LEGO will make it available in their online shop separately before that. On the other hand, due to the cancellation it is extremely rare and expensive, I would not buy it for 5 to 10 times the original price just to build it. I suggest to wait a few months to see if the parts in missing colors will be released by LEGO through bricks and pieces. I'm planning to do multiple videos about the set, so stay tuned, and I would love to hear your thoughts about it in the comments and also let me know if you want to see some details that were not shown yet. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up, you can also subscribe and tap the notification bell if you don't want to miss my technical reviews and other LEGO RC videos. See you next time, bye bye!